Hey guys, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you and today we're going to be taking a look at the Corsair SP2500 2.1 uh, speaker set. Now, there is going to be a lot of chit chatting in this but we've got some audio stuff to do as well. I was going to be trying to do this with my new mic, uh, but just so that we can all have a little bit of a laugh. The new mic is so good it can actually hear my camera focus. Don't ask me how it's doing it but yeah long and short of it is I've got to buy a better camera so yay but anyway Corsair SP2500s um, I'm going to run over some of the specs now and what I'm going to do is I'm going to save me chatting about the actual speakers themselves uh, and my thoughts on them till the end so we'll go through some of the specs but I've got to say to you guys these things are freaking amazing right from the get go and uh, I have actually got like the reviewer pack and stuff because there is so much stuff to cover and I'm not going to kind of stick stuff up and try and read it and like script it, I'm just going to kind of skim through some of the details for you and then we'll actually use them. Uh, but it is worth kind of um, listening to this because at the straight, you know, I'll, I'll let you know from the starters, I took my Z5500s off my desk for these um, and I'll, I'll, I'll let you know more at the end but they they're amazing. But anyway, we'll get on with some like details and stuff. Now the thing is, it's Corsair. They um, I can't remember the name of the bloke. I should have written it down. But Corsair actually brought a bloke in specifically to kind of design and engineer these speakers from the ground up. Uh, and the bloke, I can't remember the the uh, the speaker manufacturer that he worked at before, but. That's what he does. He knows speakers ins and outs and back to front. So he, he was brought in because he was uh, a leader in his field of what he knew what he was doing. And what they've done is they've uh, they've designed these speakers to be from the get go uh, really really good for audio, as in uh, audio in a sense of uh, music reproduction. Um, and they wanted them to be for amazing for that, and then you know let the gaming stuff follow afterwards rather than heavily aim them. At a gaming, uh, you know, like a gaming setup where you need loads of highs and stuff like that. But the actual technology that's gone into these speakers is unbelievable. And I, like I said, I'm going to talk to you about stuff, uh, you know, a little bit more later on and go into the actual the way the speakers work, the uh, control unit and stuff like this. But I'm going to try and kind of like skim through some of the stuff just so that you know. I mean, the. Uh, the subwoofer itself is what they call a fourth order bandpass uh, sub and basically what that means is the, the sub, if you imagine two boxes and then a port, the sub itself, the front of the cone, faces the port and is like inside a secondary box and then the uh, back end of the cone where the magnet is, is in another one. Um, and it's it's 120 watt, which it sounds like a lot to most, but to me, when I was used to my uh, Z5500s, which was 186 watts RMS, I was a little bit I was a little bit dubious. Um, uh, and uh, with the Z5500s, they were 505 watts RMS with all six of the satellites, and these are only 232 um, with the uh, with the all in total with the three. And, uh, but the thing is, is it's like it's crazy kind of numbers. I mean, the the speakers themselves. Uh, basically, you've got a. I'll read it out for you. You've got a three-inch uh, mid-range driver, and a one-inch um, ferro-cooled um, silk diaphragm tweeter. Uh, and you get 56 watts per satellite. You get um, 40 watts for the mid-range, and then 16 watts for the tweeter. Uh, and, but the thing is, is these are bi-amplified, which basically means that the mid-range and the tweeter are fed by completely different amplifiers. So you don't basically get all of the um, audio going straight into the back by like a single dual cable and then split up. They're actually separately driven by their own dedicated amplifier. So both the sub, the mid and the tweet all have their own uh, D-class digital uh, amplifiers and uh, there's also studio quality digital crossovers as well. Now this is something I, I'm actually I want to talk to you about because this is where things get really kind of complicated in a way but I'm going to try and explain it so that you all know. A crossover is the point where 
the 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 audio kind of range stops being delivered to the sub and then goes up to the mid, and then uh, when you know the mid range stops, that goes up to the tweeter. Now these are that kind of clever and well set up with the control unit and everything like that. You, if you've got it on during the day, we have got your sub on, you've got everything on, lovely. It's got a thing called night mode where you can turn the sub off, but you can also just flick a button on the control unit, which I'll show you later, and you can just turn the sub off altogether. Now generally, if you've got a big weighty sub delivering all that bass, you turn it off instantly, you're going to have that big drop in uh, the low end noise, and everything kind of gets a bit tinny. But these are actually quite clever because if you turn the sub off or turn it into night mode, it actually changes the crossover frequency. So basically what it does is it moves a little bit of the bass up or a little bit more of the bass up, not kind of like dangerous amounts or anything like that, but it moves a little bit more bass up into the mid uh, bass cones so that you don't lose all of the bass. But you've still got enough there for it to be pleasurable and still going to be quiet at night but you can actually hear it. When you turn the sub off, you can hear, all of a sudden there'll be a switch and you'll hear a little bit more going up into that mid bass and until you actually kind of, you sat there and you listen to it, you don't quite believe, you know, what they're telling you. They write about it and they, um, you know, I mean, they say it's all amazing and stuff like that, but until you actually start playing with it, it even amazed me. Um, and there's so much that, you know what I mean, I'm going to have to sit here and try and talk to you about and it's they're absolutely cracking. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring you in now, show you the control unit, give you a close look up at the speakers, uh, and then we'll we'll do some uh, testing. Now uh, I need to say a big thank you to One Rock FM and also Digitally Imported FM or DI FM because they've uh, given me permission to be able to use their streams. Now I know that you know we're always going to be at the limit of the camera and we're always going to be at the limit of your speakers at home, which is why I'll try and wrap it up at the end and give you a, a good in-depth kind of chit-chat about my feelings and my thoughts. Uh, and just so you know, I'm running this on my main rig and the sound card is an Asus Zonar D2X, uh, but in the uh, control panel for it, all of the, the filters and special effects and everything like that are just turned off. So it's just delivering an unkind of tweak signal straight into the speakers, uh, and uh, I'm actually using it uh, with literally just a 3.5 mil green audio cable, um, 3.5 mil jack. So no special phonos or anything like that. So basically, I'm trying to show you that you know this is kind of the worst way that you could have set it up uh, with just that kind of audio out, you know, front signal. Uh, from the green cable and then delivering it into the speakers and then letting the speakers do the work. Uh, but yes, I'm going to be quiet now, get the camera off the tripod, uh, bring you in for a little look. Right then my lovelies, just a quick look at the box. It is absolutely chuffing huge. Um, I've had to stick it on my sofa in the office. Uh, mainly because I'm doing loads of other stuff, but anyway, and I'm also recording this with the uh, old microphone because I've not started using the new one yet and I'm recording this ahead of time. Um, so yeah, don't get confused if the audio changes, but anyway, I'll tilt the camera back up a bit. I'm just going to get the stuff out the box for you, um, just so that you can have a look. We've got cable packs here, pretty much everything that you're going to need, UK power cable, all the cables for the um, speakers themselves. I'm not sure how long they are yet because I've not, like I said, I've not started to set it up or anything. But these are the speaker cables. Hopefully, these will be long enough for what I need. Uh, quite strangely, though, the speakers, speaker cables, are like four-pin power supply cables. Um, so I'm going to have to hope that these cables are long enough. They're not stupidly long. Uh, I think they're about a metre long each. That looks about 50 centimetres. So I think they're about a metre long each. I'm just initially worried that because of those connections that the cables might not be long enough. But we'll cover that later if I can run into any issues. Right, that's the cables. I'm just going to take some more stuff out of the box. It's incredibly well packed. Uh, right, 
this is the uh, kind of remote stroke control unit. I'm just undoing it now so I can show you. I'm going to show you everything in depth later. I'm literally just showing you it as I unpack it uh, before I start using it, and I'll, but I'll show you this more in depth later on. Got a little stand as well. Anyway, get into uh, one of the first of the satellites. I'm literally just going to rip it apart. Again, I will show you these um, better later. Light's a bit dark because I've actually got the light over near the box. If you have a look, see it's quite bright here. But anyway, that's the first of the satellites. Again, you can see the speaker cable connection just there. I hope Corsair do extensions. Anyway, that's the first of the satellites. I'm literally just going to try and get the sub out now, just so I can show you. And then I'm going to set it all up. Ugh! Yeah, then I'm going to set it all up on my desk. And we will get the playing. Oh, blimey Charlie, right, that isn't a small bit of kit. Now you'll notice there's no speaker on the outside. Uh, that's because the speaker's inside with the cone foot facing that way and the driver and the magnet is all enclosed in its own box. I'll explain more about that later on. Just show you the, the back. You can see the right and the left speaker. I'll try and hold it there there, you've got a line in there and an auxiliary there and then uh, the connection for the remote and then the power over here because obviously it's all built in into one but that is uh, the box and all the unit open time to get this installed and start annoying my neighbours right then guys this is the desk of Tom now you can see the two satellites, we've got a satellite there, and we've got a satellite there, and I've also got them on the little stands, I'll just, I'll just show you quickly. Basically they come with these little stands, so that you can aim them up slightly to your ears when you've got them on your desk, which I think is a really lovely idea, because obviously you don't want it just playing across your desk, you want them kind of angled towards you, so small little thing, but I really like that. Uh, while we're looking at the speakers, as I can show you, we've got the... Uh, 3 inch mid there and then you've got the 1 inch tweet at the top and the speaker cable is round the back and it looks like a 4 pin power from your motherboard basically now the cables are only a metre long uh, but I've spoken to Corsair and they are going to be doing uh, longer cables which you can buy separately after the main pack I'm hoping they're kind of going to do at least a, an, a, like a 2 metre cable because uh, it, it is a bit tight even on my desk I'll show you in a second but the sub is underneath my desk and what I was saying to you earlier about the uh, uh, the sub configuration if you imagine a line here going down here where you've got the cone driver going out this way so that's where the speakers moving in and out and then you've got the port and then behind that's where the magnet is and there's nothing behind there. Now this the sub itself actually um, has the amplifier and all the uh, <coughs> connections on as well as you can see on the back. This is the amplifier part I can tell that because it's uh, quite warm. And this is the connection for the uh, control pod. This is the connector I was telling you about this one here, the green one. There you go. That's the connection I was telling you about that I, I'm using for the um, audio today. It's basically in the uh, auxiliary port, uh, but you can use phono connections as well if you've got a high-end uh, um, high-end sound card. And then these are the two speaker connections here, and it's all basically powered by a kettle plug. 
But if I flip that over again, move it back a bit so it's out of the way, but you can see it there. It's kind of, it is big, but it's not uh, uh, intrusive. Um, uh, it's definitely a lot smaller than the Z5500 sub. Uh, but I want to show you the control unit. Right, if I pull the control unit out and move my keyboard out of the way. Right, control unit is actually relatively simple. Um, and when I first had it, I mean, I'm used to my control unit standing up like that, like the Z5500s, and it, for the first day, I have to admit, having it on the desk really annoyed me. But now I much prefer this because it's a lot smaller, you can kind of tuck it out the way. Um, I kind of learnt that all I'm really doing is turning the volume up and down and at night if I'm still up and like watching films or editing films and stuff all I'm really doing is turning the uh, sub on and off um, so yeah it's it's a grower basically but I'm going to bring it out and I'm going to show you quickly um, basically if you've got it on this setting so you click that button if I stand up I might be able to do it for you better there we go if you click that button that's the main volume which you can turn up and you'll see it go, it's three colours and all you do is kind of turn on it like that but if you push the main button down it's now muted it because basically this is like a select button as well now if we turn it onto the sub and I click that main button again that now has muted the sub so if I press it again the sub's back on it's just lit up it's quite difficult to show you this screen on my camera. If we go into the menu, there's a program setting which is, it's really not going to show you very well. No, mm, yeah, there we go. You can see the program setting there. I'll press it again. I'll try and get the camera right. Program setting. And then you can scroll through all the different um, uh, like uh, equaliser settings. I'm trying to keep the camera as still as possible so that you can see these but I leave mine on none now that would be the way that I'll be testing it today as well and then underneath you've got an input selector which basically you've got auxiliary 1 which is what I've got auxiliary 2 which is in the back of the unit here you can click that in for like your mobile phone or your mp3 player or something and then you've got uh, line in, uh, which is the main uh, one. Obviously, I need to leave it on auxiliary one. Sorry, the programs are like uh, set. They're like setting so that you can um, add effects. That's probably the better word for it. The program is the effects, and then the equalizer is just down below. There we go. Pop is what I've had mine on. But you've got pop, jazz, uh, mod X action, drama, FPS, that's obviously your game one. I know the camera's really not showing this very well so I do apologise. Action gaming, headphones, reference, classical and then back to pop which is what I want. And that's it in your setup menu, there's only three settings in there. So if we go back to the main one, I'm going to turn the volume down a little bit. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop you back on the screen so that we can get pop you back on a tripod rather, so we can get the uh, camera set up and kind of level, and then we'll uh, do a bit of um, audio uh, testing for you. As you can see, the screen's gone off there. You can actually set that uh, 15, 30, or 60 seconds times between that goes off. And just to show you again. You've got a headphone jack there at the bottom. That's your main speaker, your menu button, and then your sub button. And then this is like your volume and a select button as well. But you can also turn the unit off here. And then at the top, there's a USB port. Because uh, you can connect this a different way into your PC. Um, and then you've also got the uh, auxiliary 2 port there. I'm going to turn this back on. And now I'm going to put you on the uh, tripod and then we'll uh, stick some music on. Right then guys, a uh, bit of a weird one because I've had to move my chair so that you can kind of see the screens better. Uh, but basically, like I said, thanks to uh, One Rock, 
we're going to listen to some audio now from uh, One Rock FM. So we'll listen to a bit of that. I'm going to do a range of uh, volumes as well. Obviously I'm not 100% sure what it's going to come out like on the um, camera. But we'll do it anyway. One thing I do need to say is because I didn't mention it when I was saying about the stats earlier on. The speakers themselves are designed to be able to run at maximum volume without distortion and without blowing themselves apart for 24 hours. They're absolutely mind-boggling and to be perfectly honest with you, I've not actually been able to turn them up that loud without thinking, oh my, they lit the amount of uh, clear audio they throw out is nuts. But I'm kind of going into my conclusion again now, so what I'm going to do... Uh, I've got One Rock, and basically when you listen to One Rock, it takes you to their Loud City page. So we're going to do listen to a bit of this. Now I don't know what's going to play. That is basically on... Uh, I've got the audio on the computer set to maximum. And that's uh, on number three on the actual um, uh, controls panel itself. We'll turn it up another three. So that's six. Now that's actually louder than I have it unless I was having music on. If I'm sat working I'd have it a lot lower than this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the sub up a bit as well so you can pick that up. Now that's the sub turned up. Now that is shaking my floor and stuff now as well. It's quite loud. I've turned it up in just below the red notch. I'm going to turn the volume right up now. Turn the sub down a bit because although my neighbours are deaf, their picture frames and stuff may start falling off. So I'll turn the sub back down a bit. So we're not playing the same track all the time. I'm going to cut the camera off now and then we'll cut back into another rock track in a second. Right then, we're on to another one. Basically what I'm going to do is just turn this up. It's a good bit of vocal there as well.
Right then, moving on to DIFM. Now, um, I do listen to quite a range of music. Uh, I do like my rock. I uh, also like my trance, like a lot of electronic kind of stuff. There's a, there's a very wide range of stuff that I do like to listen to. But DIFM is one of the things I do actually pay for online. I pay for their premium service. Uh, it's like £3.25 a month or four dollars ninety nine um, and you get 256k streams so it's very very high quality streams uh, basically I'm just going to flick it on now, we'll do the same as we did before, turn the uh, volume up and down, turn the sub up and down again I don't want to be shaking pictures off my uh, neighbours um, uh, walls <laughs> it's not, well yeah, it, stuff like that has happened before and I've been having kind of parties and stuff but anyway we'll get on and listen to this So that's kind of the three notches on the volume. Wang it up a bit now. You've got dancing, I'm forgetting you're recording. Anyone would think I uh, accidentally on purpose recorded this when Armin Van Buren was on. going to do is I'm going to turn the, the volume up and then I'm going to increase the sub as well. Now the reason why I've turned it down to do that is so you can actually hear me. There's no chance you're going to be able to hear me when I'm actually doing it. Again, what I'll do is I'll uh, I'll cut off now for a second, and we'll come back so we're listening to a different track. Down in the lower setting, we'll crank it up a little bit though.
Right, just to let you know, because uh, I know a lot of people are going to ask, why was he using Media Player? Basically, I use Media Player to play my streams from DIFM. Anyway, we've had a bit of a selection of music there, so it's time for us to kind of get on to the end of the video and me to give uh, my kind of in-depth thoughts on uh, how these speakers are, are, really. So, yeah, let's crack on with that. Right then guys and girls, uh, just so that you know, uh, I was going to do some game testing but always kind of like playing the same things and saying like that and I can kind of explain it just as well as it, you can do to hear it anyway. So, the speakers, uh, when Corsair first kind of like spoke to me about these, would I be interested in reviewing them, would I be interested in a video, that kind of stuff, uh, I was a little bit apprehensive because uh, instantly I thought, oh, Brilliant, do you know what I mean? Corsair are now doing speakers. Do you know what I mean? Is that going to be like with some of the other stuff they do? Are they spreading themselves too thin? Are we going to be like, are they actually going to be any good? And I was a bit kind of, mm, do you know what I mean? And then I got sent some of the uh, the paperwork for them. And I, that kind of like, you know, I, I warmed to the idea. And then I spoke to the actual guy that designed them, and he's so passionate about them. I'm actually gutted I've lost my notepad with his name on, because I'd love to kind of name drop him. Um, and he was so passionate about all the work that he put in, and all the kind of like features, and all the technology that was in there. I was like, right, I've got to get me a set of these. And then when I first kind of got them, Corsair said to me, you're going to have to run them with a decent sound card. And when I first got them, I set them up on the test bench, with the, I took the Zonar out of my main rig and kind of like plugged it into the test bench and literally within about 30 minutes it was like oh my god and to cut a long story short 30 minutes was all it took of me listening to these to take my Z5500 off my desk out literally I unwired everything and instantly put these straight in on my main rig and I've been listening to them daily because uh, I've always got one rock on or something on DIFM or like the normal kind of radio streams and stuff like that obviously like when I'm editing videos and stuff like that and I've got to admit I I've had a couple of words with my neighbours at times and gone, I mean I'm testing some speakers do you mind if I turn it up and they've gone no we're going out at 3 o'clock so I've had literally I've had these things in, in just insanely loud um, and they don't distort for toffee and the only reason why they can start to sound a bit iffy is the room. And it's literally just, it gets a bit busy in the room. But if you've got a room that's got, they're, they're just immense. But the thing that is so amazing with them is the clarity. I mean, when I, they said to me, oh, you'll be hearing stuff on your tracks that you've never heard before. And I was like, yeah, yeah, whatever. I listen to my music all the time. I actually listen to my music. I don't just have it on. But they are right and like immensely right and there's some of the tracks and stuff that I've got or I've ripped off of like CDs that I've bought stuff like that that when you're listening to them you can actually hear a good rip to a bad rip and you can kind of hear all the kind of like like the background kind of compression and stuff like that they literally do deliver that much kind of clearness um, and yeah that you can pick up all these things uh, and I'm uh, someone that I've was I've been following on YouTube uh, for quite a long time now, way over a year or so. Is uh, someone in the UK at the moment is just kind of starting to make it big, um, and it's all starting to go a bit nuts for her. But Jessie J. Now I've listened to some of her like stuff on YouTube before, and I thought it was good. But with these, the her vocals are absolutely phenomenal. Now obviously. I, uh, I can't play them. I did contact a PR company because it's somebody that I know personally and it's something because of like the copyright and stuff like that. It's just something they couldn't get ticked off. Um, so that was a bit of a shame but literally uh, vocals on these speakers are amazing. You, you literally will be getting proper goosebumps on your arms because it's good vocals but then again because everything's so clear and you can, it almost takes you away especially with live stuff and things like that, you do get immersed in it. Uh, films, clear, crisp, lovely. Um, I had a fiddle, fiddle around with the settings and stuff on the films, and I've got to admit, I almost 
me personally, I always ended up kind of going back to the same kind of like poppy thing. Do you know what I mean? I, I didn't really like the kind of effects and stuff that they had. Um, and I didn't really kind of mess around with it that much, to be perfectly honest with you. I suppose if I, I had spent a lot more time and like, you know, comparing it all directly, but I've just been using it as and when. Um, all the different range of music from kind of uh, dubstep, drum and bass, uh, trance, rock, uh, even kind of like, like I said, proper vocal music and stuff like everything's kind of clear. With the sub you can kind of dial in, in and out if you want a little bit more bass to kind of back it up. And films as well, especially where I have it so that they're set up by the side of me like that. You, you can hear so much going on. And uh, I've, I haven't run 5.1 since I moved into my new place, but I always used to have it, but you know, kind of behind me and everything as well. With these, that they've not got like that 3D kind of effect, malarkey, and all the stuff that you can kind of get in like the software and stuff. But you don't need it because it's kind of there, it's crisp, it's clean. Um, I actually personally prefer stereo or 2.1 to kind of a 5.1 setup, especially when you start kind of like getting the THX and stuff. I personally, I'm not really a fan of that, especially with music. Uh, but games, oh my god, games are unbelievable. Um, I, I've not got it set up on this, I've had to do it on the main rig, that's why I didn't want to do it as this part of the video, because I have to strip it all down again and kind of move it across. But games are, oh. Crikey, they're just, they're, they're, you can hear the like, just like the crunches of walking across gravel, you're kind of hearing when you're going through gravel traps and and like gunfire and stuff like that, you, you're hearing every kind of cock, click, do you know what I mean, the recoil, everything, the clarity is absolutely unbelievable and the games are one of the few times I've got to admit where I did change kind of and think that the effects were kind of working a little bit. Uh, kind of the like the gaming or the FPS and the action gaming, that I can kind of understand because it gives you a little bit more top and it kind of, you, d you do get a little bit more immersed, but with settings like that it's all going to be kind of personal preference. And this is something that you've always got to kind of bear in mind. Some people like more bass, some people like less, depends on what you're listening and all that kind of stuff. But all I can say, guys, is if you're going to get these, make sure that you've got a decent sound card. If you're planning on running these off of uh, onboard audio and stuff like that, although it will sound great, you're not going to get the most out of the speakers because the signal that you're going to be feeding really isn't going to be that great. I mean, I've got a D2X, and now I'm going to get the Zonar Essence because these are just unreal. Um, so, yeah, even me personally now, I'm going to go up to, like, the all singing, all dancing, audio file sound card from Asus because I've got these and they're, they're just that good. Um, I want to see whether the, like the sound card is going to make that much of a difference. So it's got me and it's not very often that a product will make me actually want to go and spend some money to try and, and they don't need to be made better, but what I'm trying to explain is I, I just, I want to get a better sound card so I'm feeding them better signal. They're that good. Um, so Yes, I had my Z5500s for 18 months, two years, easy, and I loved them, absolutely loved them. They're crazy loud, um, uh, real bassy, but it took 30 minutes of listening to these Corsairs for me to rip it all out, take everything off my desk and start to use these. And I've got to admit, they are going nowhere. I've been looking for Z5500 replacements probably for about 12 months, you know, you get that kind of like itch where you want to change stuff, and I've had them ages, and I was like, right, it's time for me to start looking. And we've had a few sets, uh, a speaker's in, and uh, like the whole team has been looking about and stuff, and I've got to admit, nothing has come even remotely close to the Z5500, so when these turned up, I was a little bit, are we gonna, is it going to be another kind of set like that? And I was absolutely gobsmacked. So I can't, I can't really kind of put it. I don't want to sound like a fanboy or anything like that. But these speakers are the best computer speakers I've ever listened to in my whole time of owning a PC. Um, so to be perfectly honest, they're just they're above and beyond awards. They're they're like you've got to have them if you need speakers. 
and you've got the money to spend on them, then you've pretty much, it's just, it's a, an absolute, Tiny Tom Logan says, if you've, if you've got the money and you can afford them, get these, do you know what I mean, don't mess about, get yourself a decent car and get these, if you can't necessarily afford them, I'd even go as far as to say, if you, uh, if you like clear audio, you like your music, you like real nice kind of like clear, loud sounds, when you're playing your games and stuff like that, then to be perfectly honest with you, it's a case of save up and get them because it'll be one of the short of like a different graphics card and a different monitor. Uh, this will be probably one of the best upgrades that you'll ever stick on your rig, and it will probably outlive your graphics card and stuff like that as well. Because my Z5500 has went through about three or four personal graphics cards, um, so it's quite a good investment when you think about it like that as well. Um, so yeah. The Corsair SP2500s are the best PC speakers I've ever had the pleasure of listening to um, and I certainly hope that I'm going to get the pleasure of listening to them for a long time because if they want them back they've got a fight on their hands because these are epic. Um, so yeah, Tiny Tom Logan, in a good mood, we've got some wicked products, I've got a smile on my face, I've really enjoyed doing this review, my neighbours probably haven't enjoyed it that much, but never mind, they're probably getting used to me by now, if uh, they're not deaf they will be, um, so yeah, it's nice for me to be able to get a good product and actually be able to sit here and say I really, really wholeheartedly recommend this, um, so yeah, let me know what you thought, let me know what the camera was like, because I'm going to listen to it you know, once it's uploaded and stuff like that and YouTube have finished compressing it. But don't forget to subscribe and comment. Uh, don't forget to take a look at the channel and see all the other kind of like video reviews and everything that we've done. But yeah, big cheesy grin on my face. This is going to be an, 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 this is going to be an enormous video. But can't really say any more. They've put that much of a grin on my face that I'm now starting to loop round in circles and uh, talk stuff that you're trading on the street. So yeah, this is Tiny Tom Logan with the easily gold award winning um, Corsairs. But to be quite honest with you, we should have like a diamond award or something like that because these are absolutely mind blowing. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to shut up. I really am going to sign off now. This is Tiny Tom Logan with another video for you.